What's up, everybody? It is Jabril with Animation Hustle. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Buckle on up because we are about to be looking at the legendary Disney animator, Glenn Keane. Now, of course, we're all animators, so I don't have to re remind you how awesome this guy is. I don't have to tell you that he's the guy behind Ariel from Little Mermaid, the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, or Tarzan from Tarzan. He is responsible for so many iconic and classic Disney characters. I thought it'd be great to look to see what kind of advice he has for animators. So let's jump on into it. Let's see what uh, Glenn Keane has to say. Here are some animation tips by Disney legend, Glenn Keane. There's a whole evolution that an idea goes through from beginning to end. You look at the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo didn't start by just immediately painting on the ceiling. He first had to do his studies before he could jump into it. The same with animation. Uh, we went to Africa, we studied how animals move, we studied sculptures, uh, anatomy. One of the things I loved about working in Paris was the chance to ride my bike and discover things along the way, like this statue by Dalou in the Place de la Nation. There's a man riding this lion, and when I went around this statue, I thought, that's Tarzan. So we started to do drawings based on what we saw from that sculpture and other studies of anatomy. We brought in the professor of anatomy from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts. Uh, I did these drawings in pencil. and He went over the muscles in red. We found that this costume that Tarzan was wearing was going to be the most complicated of all. It was the first time we'd ever animated actually a functioning human anatomy. I said, so, what did you think? And um, they were always critical, you know, on, on, on animation and, and all. He said, um, well, we wouldn't have done it that way. So what do you mean? Well, there was times there where she just was not very appealing. There was, she was, there were some, well, pretty ugly expressions there. Whoa, this is, I realized, yeah. And that was a conscious choice. And so I told him, I said, well, you know, you're, you're right. Because anytime we had a choice between going for pretty or real, we always chose real. Because we'd stop frame and we'd find ugly faces and we went for the ugly face because with that mixed in, there was like, oh, there, there's a real expression, you know. If you scrunch your face, it may not be the most pretty, you'd never put it on a poster, but mixed into that sauce, it, it's it got a pop and a snap. And, and I realized at that point that they were animating in a different era with a different taste and the lighting, you look at all the, the movies in the 40s and, and I don't know, there's this ideal, idealism of, of a beauty. Ariel was, was much more in my time. Uh, it was an honesty about this is who they are, let's just not pretend that somebody's just snow white and pretty, but this is a real teenage girl with frustrations and anger and all those kinds of things. Uh, we were going for that. The scene where Tarzan meets Jane face to face is a moment where he discovers someone like him. You have to express it in the eyes and I tried to find a moment in my own life when I had seen and discovered somebody like myself for the first time. And I remember my daughter Claire being born 30 seconds old. The doctor puts her in my hand and I looked and it was like a mirror. I could see myself and I told Claire, when you see this scene, Claire, that's not Tarzan looking at Jane, that's me looking at you. These are the things that make Disney animation real for us, is taking our own life and trying to put that up onto the screen so the audience feels it like we did. And there's this one moment in part of your world where Ariel is singing um, and she reaches out and she wants to touch that, that world that is impossible. And I'm a 33 year old guy and I'm animating this 16 year old mermaid. and. Um, you know, I'm trying to be cool and all that, but I am a mermaid now. And, 
and Ariel is swimming up, and I can tell that she wants to do something like really cheesy and reach right out to the audience with these big, huge eyes, and, and then oh, I drift back down. And it's like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, everybody will know what a, a sentimental guy I am. And, um, but I couldn't stop Ariel, she did it anyway. Years later, I was speaking at Cal Arts, and uh, one of the students came up to me and said, uh, Mr. Keene, um, I gotta talk to you. I said, yeah, what is it? Well, uh, there's this moment in Little Mermaid where um, Ariel, uh, in part of your world, um, is swimming and, and reaching, reaching out. I don't know if you remember, but she's like reaching right out for the audience. And I said, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. I said, well, well, I was four years old, and I was in that movie theater, and when that moment came on, I stood up, and I reached out to take her hands so that I could bring her in where I was because she wanted to be part of my world. Thank you, I could kiss you. <laughs> this was to connect with your audience. When you are vulnerable, when you, you put your own feelings out there and you go, you know, I'm not going to listen to that voice in my head that says, eh, don't do that. It's going to be cheesy. Everybody's going to know something more about you than you want them to know. That means you should do that very thing. That's the part of you that you need to open up as an artist. And it's been that way for me all the way along. The very best things, it seemed to me, in life and in creativity are Often the things that you don't work for, but the things that you are given, they're like a gift. They're just there. And you just have to be ready to find them and pick them up. So there you have it. Those are four animation tips from Disney legend Glenn Keane, one of the greatest to ever do it. I really am inspired by his passion. You can see how he puts himself into all of his characters, his performances, and I think that's what makes his particular character stand out from other animated characters. I also am really inspired by, actually, you know, tip number five, I'm really inspired by the fact that he um, is so open-minded. You know, he's working in VR and animating some really crazy, super cutting-edge technology stuff, but he started out just animating on paper. Like, when he was animating in the, what, 80s? or whatever, whenever he started, what he's doing now didn't even exist. Some people, when they see technology change, they're resistant to it. I want to do it the way I always did it, and that's the way I'm going to do it. But he's like, no, if, if it's changing, I'm going to change too. I'm going to try new things. I'm going to put myself out there and see how I can further advance my love for this art form. And he's doing it. So tip number five is to always stay open-minded and let life take you wherever it's going to take you. In the comments down below, let me know what tip you like the best and also if you have any animators you want to see featured in the meantime you can find us on instagram at animation hustle and also check out some more videos we got plenty of them coming so hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one